Hello everyone. In this video, I will be showing you how you can access a Linux VM using SSH with IAP in GCP. There are multiple ways for you to do this, and I will be showing you all of these methods and options to do this. Of course, it's important that you make sure your workloads are secured and are not exposed to the internet needlessly. So stay tuned to know how to SSH into a Linux VM without their public IP addresses, as you can see here. Now, if you're looking to know more on how to access specifically a Windows VM, then check out my other video about this same topic, which does show the way of accessing a Windows VM using RDP with IAP as well. Also, I won't be getting into deep details about IAP and how does it work and what are its use cases and all in this video. But if you want all of that info, then you can check out my other video, which is a little bit longer version about this information and all of this detail. That video will also show you how you can access a Linux VM using IAP. You can also just watch that video if you're interested to know the whole thing about IAP. What are the use cases, how to connect to Windows and Linux VMs at the same time. You can find the link for this video and the other one in the video description, of course. And also just before starting, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. This will help other people find it quickly and will help me grow the channel as well, which is very much appreciated. Okay, so this is my workspace or my sandbox environment. And as you can see here, there is a Linux VM that does not have a public IP address. And what's different from the Windows VMs, if you watch that video that I mentioned a moment ago, is that you can still click the SSH button here on the Linux version. But in Windows, if you remove the public IP, then you will not be able to click the RDP. The button here will be disabled. So that's the main difference here. Now, this is your first method of accessing the uh, Linux VM with IAP in GCP. So you just click the SSH button. It's going to open a new window for you and it's going to do the magic behind the scenes. So it's going to ask if I want to initiate an SSH connection. Yes, I will do that. Then it's doing its magic, transferring the SSH keys to the VM and then letting me access the VM through the SSH port or SSH service on or using IAP. So this is the Linux VM. I can now work on it normally on SSH. Now, before showing you the other options that you have, basically there are two more options that I want to show you. First of all, let me just show you the stuff that made this work and how you can do this, the same setup on your end, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. So there are three main important points and requirements here. First of all, you have to ensure that the IAP API is enabled. To do this, you have to go to the menu and then I am an admin. Then you go to Identity Aware Proxy. In the case the IAP was not enabled, you will see a different view. You will see a little dialog here or a little box telling you that Enable IAP Identity Aware Proxy. You just click Enable IAP and then it will show you the same page. Depending also if you use App Engine or whatever other serverless applications or services, you will find different view here. But this is the view if you have IAP enabled. And the other point here is you need to grant the user's access to connect to the VMs over the IAP. And to do this, you have to go to SSH and TCP resources and then find the VMs that you want to grant access to your users on. In my case, there is only one VM, so it only makes sense. I click this. You can do it for the zone also. So anything under this zone will inherit the uh, IAP permissions. It's a good idea to only use the least privileged approach. So if they require only to access this VM, just give them access to this. Now, keep in mind that owners will have access by default. But then if you want to add other users that are not owners, you go to add principal and then you type the email address, which is a Google enabled account like uh, Gmail, Cloud Identity, Google Workspace, whatever. You just type it here. And then in the roles, you go to Cloud IAP and then IAP Secure Tunnel User. This is the second point about the permission. Once you do this, then you only need to check the firewall, which is the third point. So you go to VPC networks or VPC network, then go to firewall. And then you need to make sure that you have a firewall rule that allows traffic from the IAP IP range, which is this one 
into your GCP project or VM or whole VPC if you want to choose this. Now, there is another important point where sometimes you might miss or might not do properly, which is if you need to allow traffic only through IAP, for example, uh, the SSH traffic that you want to allow only through IAP, then you need to make sure that there is no other rules that allow SSH traffic into that VM beside this one. So if you have another rule such as uh, basically the same rule, but you replace the uh, IP range with, like, let's say, zeros, all zeros, zero, 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 slash zero, and you put the protocols and ports to 22, which is the SSH, then this rule will be useless. And in this case, IAP will not function because you are just bypassing the whole thing of the whole concept of IAP. And through that additional firewall rule, you're just bypassing the whole IAP and connecting directly to the VM. So it's important you review your firewall setup and make sure that only the traffic that you want to go through IAP is allowed through this, not any other firewall rule. So these are the three important checkpoints or the three important prerequisites that you need to do for this. Now into the other methods, which is using gcloud. And what gcloud will do is, it's basically also is going to create a TCP tunnel for you or an IAP tunnel for you over the uh, SSH port. And then it will transfer your SSH keys and then let you access the VM. Usually gcloud will invoke putty for this so let me just show you the command prompt here and the command that you need to type here is gcloud compute ssh gcloud compute ssh and then the instance name in my case it's instance one and then you have to type the option to force iap tunnel and usually i like to type the zone just to make sure that i'm not missing any let's say anything or i'm if even if i'm working on an undefault zone then I just make sure that I don't get errors or anything. So zone, sorry, zone equals Europe dash west one. Yeah, it's Europe west one B. So this is my zone. Now watch what's going to happen when I press enter. It's going to ask me, do I want to continue to the connection? Yes. Now that's specifically for putty. So I'm typing yes. It's generating a private key for myself, so that's what it's doing. And then it's going to transfer the SSH key and it's going to do all of this magic for you. And we'll, you will see now the interface of Putty started up and you will be logged in into the VM's SSH. This is the second method. Now, the third method is more friendly in my opinion, and I actually love it very much. I started to love it since the moment that I saw it which is using IAP desktop. Now IAP desktop is a client made by Google. I don't know how officially they support it or how far they go with the support for this, but it's something that is made by them. So that's something awesome. And the point of IAP desktop is it's going to provide an interface for you and your users and admins to select a workload and connect to it securely through IAP. So it's a good option for you to maintain the environment security and compliance in terms of prop, uh, public IP addresses and external exposure and all of this. Now, all you have to do here is just simply downloading the client. The IAP client can be found on GitHub, which is this page. And you just click the download IAP desktop and you will be able to download it and install it and then configure it. I will be having a future video about how you can download it and install it and do some basic configuration for it if you want to have a pre-configured environment. But the point is, it's just very straightforward and easy to be set up. Once you authorize, once you log in with your account to IP desktop, it will ask you to add a project similar to this. So once you add your project that you want to work with, you will see the instances. So you just right click the instance, click connect. Again, it's going to do the magic for you behind the scenes. It will create an SSH key for you, transfer that to the VM, set up the IAP tunnel, then get you inside the VM. And that's all. <laughs> I hope that by now you know also how to connect to a Linux VM in GCP using SSH and IAP, which is a more secure way rather than just doing it over the internet. And I hope also that you will start implement this and 
maybe enforce it across the organization to make sure that you are maintaining that baseline of security in your organization as well. If you have any question or comment about this video or any of the content in the other videos, please don't hesitate to put it in the comment section. Just post anything there and I will make sure to reply to you and to address any question or point that you have. Also, if you want more GCP related content and ideas, make sure to subscribe to the channel as well and enable that notification bell so that you are notified of any new content that I upload to the channel. And finally, if you are an existing Google Workspace admin or if you are considering to be a Google Workspace, if you want to implement it for your organization or if your organization is going to implement this and if you are looking for resources on how to manage and how to work with Google Workspace, then please check out my Google Workspace admin course on Udemy. This is a very comprehensive course. It covers a lot of topics such as users and groups management, device management, Google Vault. Also talks about data and compliance, data protection and security and all of the regulation stuff about data. And you will have a very comprehensive reference for everything that you need in Google Workspace. You can get it from the link below in the video description at a discounted price. And once you do that, you will get lifetime access with constant updates and new content all of the time. And once more, thanks a lot for watching. Stay safe wherever you are and I will see you again in a new video.